especially a beautiful Sunday afternoon. That was, that's not that usual for Cincinnati in the spring, so it's good. Uh, I'm the director for the Cincinnati Area Baptist Association. And in uh, about February of 2018, I had the opportunity to go to a conference down in uh, Florida. And I had an opportunity to hear this training and I said, wow, do we ever need this in the Cincinnati area because it's so reproducible? And they said, that's fine, we'll send you a couple of trainers. And I go, just like that? And they said, you don't have to pay them, we'll pay them, you know, you don't have to do anything. And uh, I go, man, you can't beat that. So in June of 2018, we had two couples, one from the Dallas area and the other from Houston, come all the way to Cincinnati and begin the training for us. And you all are almost the 900th people that we've had the opportunity to train in our hundred and some um, a uh, hundred and some churches that we have in the Cincinnati area. One of the reasons that we like it so much is it's so reproducible. What we're going to give you today, you'll be able to use with Christians as well as non-Christians, and I'll explain what that means. It is going to be evangelism training, but it should be something that you could even do with someone else who's a Christian to teach them, okay? And that's why this has been uh, so enjoyable to do. Uh, out of the trainers that we started with in June of 2018, I just want you to know a little bit of your heritage, that you're part of something bigger, uh, which for a Baptist association is always fun, especially in a place like Ohio. But we were able to get uh, a group going with one church in Finley, Ohio, and now that's taken all over Finley. We were able to get it started in Toledo. Then we went up into uh, Michigan, and I worked with my counterparts, our associational leaders in uh, all across Michigan, and they've taken it across Michigan. And then one of the groups that I trained went to Akron, Ohio, and then they had a connection in Pittsburgh, and it's gone there. And that's as far as I can track it so far. So you guys are a part of something that's going on. In 2019, um, a year after I took the training, the International Mission Board invited a few of us over to India, and we sat in Bangalore, and the first thing we did the first day was get the training you're getting today as well. So this is something that is so simple, so reproducible, and it's so effective in bringing people to faith in Jesus Christ. And we don't take that lightly. Uh, we see that what you're going to be doing is biblical, and it's something I think that you'll enjoy. Uh, Pastor Daniel, if you don't mind, um, I, have a, a, I have a manual that I'd like to pass out to you guys today. Uh, this is a very special manual, and you only have one thing you need to do to activate it, okay? You just fold it in half, like that. And you'll have your manual ready to go for today, all right? Didn't take much ink. No, isn't that amazing? It's great. Now, all you have to do is spit on it, and it'll just appear. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> that, we'll, we'll do that some other time. One of the reasons we don't write on this piece of paper is we want you to do it as you learn it from me, okay? As, as I do it, you will do it. How many panels do you see on this? Four. Four, thank you. How many parts do you think there are to this training? There's always one. Actually, it's four and a half. <laughs> There's a little trick. Uh, number three is in two parts, so uh, we'll, we'll get that as well. I hope you, that you enjoy this time together. Uh, we're going to need some participation from you guys to make this really effective. And uh, so in order to do that, you're going to need a battle buddy, okay? Nobody goes through this alone. You, you find a partner, and uh, you'll be teaching it to each other is what we typically do in this training. And uh, battle buddies are a lot of fun. Yep. Couples are, are good at this as well. Uh, if you're here solo, finding, some, finding, somebody of the, uh, finding somebody of the same gender is always helpful. Um, one of the reasons that we want to share our faith here in the Cincinnati area is because of just the statistics that we continue to find. Uh, in the Cincinnati area, and I've shared it, I believe, from the pulpit here when I've preached, uh, is we have 1.8 million people in the nine counties that are here in southwestern Ohio, okay, that makes up the Cincinnati Area Baptist Association. Out of that 1.8 million people, about one and a half million are not what you and I would say are born again. And what's also interesting is only one million people are not related to any religious organization at all, at all. 
Um, one of the th resources out there for us in leadership is the uh, Association of Religion Data Archives. I don't expect you to write that down or remember it, but they have 286 different religious groups reporting to them, and they, they connect that uh, for each one of us to be able to go in and see what kind of uh, participation we're having. And so one million people here in the Cincinnati area not related to any church. And that means not a Jewish synagogue, not a mosque, not a Methodist church, nothing. Okay, so we have uh, that for you to see. All right, is everybody ready? Everybody got a pen? Uh, boy, can we help you with pens? We have the... Uh, Amazing bucket of pens. Isn't that cool? Did you get this off your desk? No, that's come from the children's desk. Children's desk. All right, I love it. That's great. All right, yeah. Oh, would you mind? Pa oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, you can pass it around if you want. Now, see, by the end of yours, your, yours will look like mine, see? So... That's good. All right, guys, let me go ahead and start and um, then you can do whatever, whatever I do, okay? Um, we have the Great Commission on us. I'll also say that as an introduction. Uh, the Great Commission says what? To go and make disciples of all people, right? Uh, baptizing them and teaching them. Uh, we are under a command, a commission to make disciples of all people. And so... That leads us to number one. On your first panel of your manual, you, you would do this it's up in the corner. Just pretend this is your sheet. I guess I could turn it sideways, but that's okay. Uh, one is in big letters, you can write why. Why are we supposed to make disciples? Okay. Why are we supposed to make disciples? Well, um, it's because... We have our identity in Jesus. Our identity in Jesus comes from 2 Corinthians. Uh, I'll write that down too. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. And I want to read that for us. Okay, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21 says, from now on then, we do not know anyone in a purely human way, even if we have known Christ in a purely human way, yet now we no longer know him in this way. Okay, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away and look, new things have come. Everything is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and he has committed the message of reconciliation to us. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, certain that God is appealing through us. We plead on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. He made the one who did not know sin to be sin for us, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Okay. We see that word reconcile. We don't use that a lot except maybe reconciling our checkbooks, you know, making them right. Well, it's the idea that we are God's enemies until he makes us his friends. And that's all it is. The ministry of reconciliation goes around making people that are enemies of God, friends of God. All right, so we have our identity in Jesus and it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21, that he makes us new creatures. And you can draw a little stick man. And because he's new, we like to put the little shiny stuff around. When stuff's brand new, it's shiny, right? Okay. All right. We are new creatures. Old things have passed away. Everything's become new. Isn't that cool? And because Jesus reconciled us to him, then he wants us to do the same thing and we are to go out and reconcile other people to him. We are to make other people that are the enemies of God his friends. And so we become ambassadors. If you wanna know how to 
draw a globe. That's all you do, okay? All right, so we're to be his ambassadors. Isn't that cool? He wants us to go out as ambassadors. There's a phrase that we like to use in this training, and it's called saved people are sent people. Isn't that great? Let me, let me put it this way. Um, if the State Department called you and says, hey, we've received your application and you have just been approved by the United States of America to be our ambassador to some country. Daniel, what country do you want to be ambassador to? Tanzania. Tanzania. All right. You have been named as an ambassador to the East African country of Tanzania. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be great? And everybody's going, woohoo, Daniel's going to be an ambassador to Tanzania. <clears throat> but what if Daniel doesn't go? Right. Well, is there a spiritual overtone of that as well? If we're new creatures and he wants us to be his ambassadors, do you think we ought to go? He's already commanded us to make disciples. Now we're going to be his ambassador. We are going to, why are we going to be disciples? It's because our identity is in Jesus. We're new creatures who can be ambassadors. And we get that from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 through 21. Okay. You got all of that? That's our first part. What I want you to do is I want you to take your battle buddy through that. I want you to team up and each person will take turns going through this why part number one. Okay? Go for it. Doing good. How are you? You can take. Hey, good to see you. Hello. Hello. There you go, guys. We've already started. What I want you to do is take your paper and just fold it in half like this, okay? And then we're going to call it volunteers, and they're going to teach you the first thing that you put on this one. But you put number one up here in the corner, and why? And you're going to have four things. That, that you're going to learn, okay? There'll be four things on this. Do you have pens? Yes. Okay. Come on up with me. Uh, why don't you take that bucket back there, if you don't mind? Thank you. Okay, if your partner hasn't had a chance to do it, go ahead and switch. All right, make sure both of you have an opportunity to teach it. 
We have some Nepali friends that have joined us, and so we're going to need a teacher in just a minute. Okay, you guys have just about finished, it sounds like. Okay. All right, um, who would like to volunteer to come up and uh, teach us all in that uh, first part of why do we make disciples? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not hearing you unless you're up here at the board holding a marker. You gotta draw the picture and everything. Michael, you have, you have been recruited, dude. Shanghai is another word for it. We can help him, right? We can help him. Michael. Samuel, you can help me. That's awesome. I should have never opened my mouth. Okay. All right. Michael, why should we be making disciples? And this is what you guys need to write on your paper, okay? Draw it big is all I can say so these guys can see it. I don't think they're seeing that on the back row. I can't see it. I'm like, it goes right underneath the cross. Come on. That's it. That's all right. It works that way. Second Corinthians five. It's it's Second Corinthians five seventeen through twenty one. Okay. Now, this is great. And as a new creation in Christ, we're called to be an ambassador for Christ. And as an ambassador, we are sent out into the world because the Great Commission tells us to go out and make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay. And so we are sent into a lost and dying world to proclaim the gospel to those who are still held captive in darkness. Hey, look at that globe. That's great. Just give him a hand. Thank you. Okay. That's great. Um, didn't he do a good job? I appreciate that. And it's all right. You're among friends. We've got to learn how to do this, okay? It's a, a matter of being able to do this. Uh, for our Nepali friends, uh, Kumar and all, we are talking about we make disciples, but why do we make disciples? And it's the idea that we have our identity in Jesus. Okay, let's have a lady up here. Can we have a lady up here and go through it with us? You mind helping us out? You mind helping us out? I'm sorry? Yeah, exact same thing. And if you, that's great, thank you. All right, great. <laughs> She said it. Listen up. This is great. So our why is our identity is in Jesus. Make sure they can see it there in the cheap seats there where Linda is. There you go. Corinthians 5. 
How about a cross? There you go. Uh huh. And what does that say? It says that we are new creatures in Christ. And we are called to be ambassadors to the world. Good. That's great. And it says that we're to reconcile people with God. What does that word reconcile mean? It means to take people that were enemies and make them friends. Let's give her a hand. Thank you. All right. That's our first lesson. Uh, I appreciate it. All right. Now, we're going to move into that second uh, panel on your paper. Open it up. It's on the left side. All right. Your second one, you can write the word who. Some of y'all are writing really small, just all squinched up like one inch by one inch. Now, nah, fill up that whole thing. You're not going to write anything else on this. Yeah, fill up the whole thing. Make it big. All right. Who? Who are you going to go and make disciples of? We are going to learn a brand new word today. It's called an oikos map. For some reason, since this started, oikos is being used. Oikos means your sphere of influence. And I guess oikos was a lot easier to write than the word sphere of influence, all right? Or your circle of influence. An oikos is a map. We're going to talk about people that you know, all right? So what I want you to do is put a circle in the middle of your paper and put your name in the middle of it, all right? Put your name right in the middle of it. And then I want you to put down people, at least one person's name, who is maybe a family member that doesn't know Jesus, all right? A family member. How about somebody at your work? where you work or your job. How about them? Just somebody's name, perhaps, there. You don't have to write the word name. And then how about some place where you live, like a neighbor? How about somebody that you know where you live? And then what about somebody where you do recreation? Recreation. Uh, you play... Uh, golf, or you play ball, or you work out, or uh, something. These are just meant to be different people that you know that don't know Jesus or needs to have a be reconciled to God, be made God's friend. Would you just take a second and explain who these people are to your neighbor, to your battle buddy? Okay, that's it. That's this lesson. It's got a little bit of a extra in just a second. You can see those from back here pretty good, can't you? Yeah, you can see that. <laughs> All right, H have you had a chance to switch and uh, tell your battle buddy uh, about your oikos map? What does the word oikos mean? Sphere of influence. All right, it's your sphere. 
S-P-H-E-R-E. It could also be just a circle of influence, okay? We're using circles, so circle of influence. People that you come in contact with that you know need Jesus. All right, I'm gonna take you a little bit to the next, I'm sorry. I can't hear, I'm sorry. Oh, the uh, oikos just means circle of influence, that's it. All right, now, I'm gonna give you the second part of this. If you look at John 17, 20. In that scripture verse, Jesus is speaking with his disciples, and in verse 17, 20, he says, he's praying to God, and Jesus said, I pray not only for these, his disciples, but also for those who believe in me through their message. So when you take a look at your sphere of influence, the last part of this in John 17, 20 is your family members may know other people that know other people that need Jesus. Would you agree? You may not know them, but they do. That family member may know them. So it's the idea that your sphere of influence, when we talk about influence, can go beyond just the people that you know, you wrote those one names down, to other people as well that they know. All right? Now, I want you to tell your battle buddy the whole Oikos map. This is all of the Oikos map, okay? Explain this and explain why John 17, 20 is important as you tell the gospel, not only to the people that you know, but then they tell other people also. All right, if you haven't had a chance to switch, go ahead and switch and let your partner do it. Yeah, you got a piece of paper, good. Okay, who would like to come up here and do their Oikos map for everybody? All right, come on up. Yeah, I'm glad you said that, uh, make sure I was saying sphere of influence and not spear of influence. We, we don't want to spear people for Jesus, you know. <laughs> Please, take us through the sphere of influence where you started off with that funny word. All right, so this is who we evangelize. And the Oikos map is our sphere of influence. <laughs> not spear. <laughs> so not spear. So the circle would represent you, not me. And then we have people like in our family, people that we live that live near us, people we work with, people we recreate with, yep. and whoever else. Okay. And uh, 
they also know other people. So we can influence these people and then they can influence their people because in John 17, 20, Jesus prays for his disciples and he also prays for those who will believe on him through their message. I like it. So family, work, people that you already know, and then they can influence people that they already know. That's great. Give them my hand. That's great. All right. Would someone else like to volunteer, a lady perhaps this time? Come on up. Shall I tell about that? Nope. Nope. <laughs> You're going to teach just this part that you were just taught. Just this part. Okay, so Okay, where do we start out? We use the funny word. We got a name for this. Yeah, put our name in the middle. Nope. No. How about, did you give a title to this? The Oikos map? Oh, Oikos. There you yeah. go. Thank you. Thank you. It's okay. Nice handwriting. Uh, if you would like to do that, that's okay too. All right, Jane. Okay, just keep going and just keep writing your circles. And if you want to put their names, that's fine. You don't have to. Okay. Okay. And so I tried witnessing to him. Not too happy about it. But I recently had an accident where I slid down a, a wet hill and laid the face down on my Patio. Oh my goodness. And God turned it into a mountain. And he came. Wow. He heard me screaming and he came and saw that. Okay. So I might ask him something. What do you think about that? Okay. All right. What's your next person? Who's your next person? And, uh, well, wait a minute, I got a little more there. His widow has been in church with me here. Hadn't seen her for 20 years. Okay. She and this Catholic husband came here okay. at one time. All right. So now she is, I think, back in church. All right. So and I'm pretty sure she's saved, but she has, she has a sphere of That's good to hear. Her stepdaughter. All right. Who is also Catholic, but I'm... And what scripture verse tells us that uh, we can go beyond our sphere of influence through these people? Did you write down? It is. Yeah, you can write that up there. All right, thank you. And you're going to write John 17, 20 for us? Oh, yeah. All right. The reason John 17, 20 is important is we think that all we do is just witness just to those that we influence, and we don't realize that they know so many even more people than we do. If you've been a Christian more than three years, lost people know more people that are lost than you do. So that's important. Jane, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Let's give her a hand. Yeah.
Let it go. I appreciate it. All right. Now, now we've talked about, um, you know, the uh, why and the who. Now, number three is going to be in two parts. So what I want you to do is draw a line across the middle of the third panel. All right. And what this is going to be is the what. What are you going to say to explain the good news of Jesus? In order to do this, what I'd like to do is demonstrate for you a 15-second testimony, okay? You may have had training in the past um, <clears throat> where you've done like a three-minute testimony and that kind of thing. Um, I just want you to hear it. First of all, do you guys have any uh, phones with you or anything you can time me with, all right? Uh, pull out your phones, pull it up to your stopwatch, and uh, let's see how long that it takes me to do my testimony, all right? I see everybody just about ready. Okay. No, don't show it to me. That'll just mess me up. Okay. There was a time in my life where I picked fights and I lied, but I asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins and committed my life, surrendered to follow him, and he gave me peace and a purpose. Do you have a story like that? How, 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 how long did it take? 13? 12.49. Okay, cool. All right. What I'm saying is, is you have to be very disciplined to do this, okay? It actually takes a lot of work. It takes a little bit of really thinking about it. Now, in teaching the 15-second testimony, you say this is all centered in Jesus, okay? And you have your life before Christ. There are usually two things. And usually you begin your story by saying, there was a time. Did I do that? All right. There was a time. And there's two things that your life was before Christ. And then you ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins and you surrender to follow him. Those are very important. Okay. And then you share Two things after you became a Christian that your life has been. He gave me peace and a purpose. That's all I said. And then you say, do you have a story like that? <laughs> do you have a story like that? All right. And that's how you do a 15-second testimony. And this is what the diagram looks like, okay? Um, there was a time, and what I want you to do is come up with two words, just two words that you would put in here and there. Let's say that you had a problem with gambling or something. There. Uh, you could say you had a trouble with anger. You could put it there. You have to think through, because before you come to faith in Christ, you can maybe list 15 things. We had a, a young pastor that had had a Damascus Road experience, if you know what I mean. He had a terrible life before Christ, and he gave us a 45-minute testimony uh, one Sunday evening. Well, it was 40 minutes telling us how to sin, 40 minutes of explaining new ways to be able to profane God's name. I mean, at the end of 40 minutes, I felt like I needed to be baptized again. I mean, after 40 minutes, it was all about him. And then he goes, and then I went to church and got saved and baptized, and here I am today. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, because that transformative process is so important. Really, no matter what you say here, and it could vary. If, if you're working with somebody that had something similar to your situation, maybe lying, not telling the truth or whatever, you make sure that that's included. But asking Jesus to forgive you of your sins and surrender. Uh, we would say a Southern Baptist, it's repent and believe. We call it their linked. We need to do two things, repent and believe. But asking Jesus to forgive your sins and then follow him and then have two things that your life has been like since. You never want to forget what your life has been like since. You want to paint a picture for them that, hey, 
the disgusting things I'm doing or what I'm a part of or how, you know, I'm not being right um, is very important for the future. But then do you have a story like that? In the story of Mary and Martha where Lazarus had died after Jesus telling Martha, I am the resurrection and the life, he gets down and asks Martha, do you believe these things? Jesus was right there with somebody that's saying, okay, I'm gonna be a follower, but do you have a story like this? Ask somebody, do you have a story like that? And see what they say. Zip your lip and listen. I mean, see if they do. We a lot of times do cold calling and visiting. Um, sometimes when we do this training, we even send people out two by two. They go to different neighborhoods. But a lot of times they go, no, I don't have time for this. And you could say, you know, there was a time in my life where, and move right into your 15 second testimony. They'll listen to you for 15 seconds, you know? And then you could say, do you have a story like that? Even if they close the door, it's going to make them think, okay? All right, so spend just a couple of minutes working on your 15 second testimony. You can even pull up your stopwatch and time yourself if you'd like. Okay, what we're gonna do different this time is I would like volunteers to stand and we're gonna time you doing your 15 second testimony, all right? Would somebody like to stand and we'll have you do your 15 second testimony? You have a volunteer over here? All right, if you wanna time him, you can do it. All I can ask is that you start off with this, there was a time. We want you to start off saying, there was a time. There was and, a time. I was a doubting Thomas. I didn't believe anything that the Bible said. And then one night, we had a gift of God and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit changed. Okay, that's 15 seconds. All right, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, wow, your heart, that is great. Okay, it's hard to do it in 15 seconds, isn't it? Uh, let's try it. Somebody else want to try to do it in 15 seconds. Okay, Linda, go for it. Okay. Okay, I got 19 seconds. Anybody else? Is that about right? <laughs> if Linda can do it in 19 seconds, anybody can do it, right? <laughs> no, it's fine. It takes really honing this down. You've got homework on this one, okay? Your homework is to go home and practice this. What's interesting, out of all of these that we're gonna teach you, I'm gonna teach you the three circles methods next, we're finding that people are actually starting Sometimes a gospel conversation of saying, hey, there was a time in my life. And then, do you have a story like that? I mean, being able to do that is really, really powerful because what it is is it takes the focus off you, it focuses it on Jesus, but where does it end it? It ends it up, makes them think, do I have a story like that? And we've already heard the emotional story here. I mean, you've got that story that's there. All right, I'm gonna move on. We doing okay? You're gonna do the bottom half of your page and the bottom half of page three, we call the three circles testimony. Okay, 
This is called three circles. Okay. Typically, what we do with the three circles is we start off asking people, how can we pray for them? I've done it with waitresses, uh, different servers in our restaurants. I did it buying tickets at an Omnimax in Newport. Uh, there was nobody standing around, just me and the ticket taker. And uh, I just started off, how can I pray for you? It's amazing how many people you can ask, can you pray for me? And they go, you want to pray for me? They, they're taken aback. People don't go around doing that. Uh, sometimes after I've talked to a service person on the phone, I said, okay, you've been very kind. Even a scheduler for a medical appointment. And I said, how can I pray for you? You want to pray for me? And when you get through praying, a lot of times you can pick up something and this is where you want to start saying, may I, may I draw a diagram for you? Obviously, on the phone, you're just going to tell them. You're not going to draw it. But you would start off saying, we really live in a broken world, don't we? It's not as God wanted to create it, which was perfect. He did it out of love for each one of us. But unfortunately, there was this thing called sin. And sin keeps us from following, you can write the word in there, uh, sin keeps us from going back to God's ways. And what happens is, is we keep trying to do things to make us feel better. We might want to try drugs, or we might want to try uh, taking exotic vacations, or spending lots of money, or working really hard and, and trying to make money. But it, it's, they're like springs. No matter what you do, it's like a bungee cord. It, it draws you back into this brokenness because each one of these things are only temporary fixes. We're, we've got a, a problem. We're trying to figure out how to be in a loving environment, but that sin blocks us from getting there to it. Well, this is our third circle. Um, God knew that we needed help, so he sent Jesus to do three things, okay? Jesus came to earth and lived a life as a man, even though he was fully God. And he lived a perfect life showing us what we needed to do to have a relationship with his father. But yet the religious leaders that were there crucified Jesus. But he became a fulfillment of prophecy because he died on the cross as a sacrifice for each one of us for all time. And by dying, he stayed dead three days. And on the third day, he rose from the dead and he went back and he's alive in heaven today with God the Father. If we, now here's the plan. If we will turn and obey, turn and obey Jesus. He will help us to grow into what God wanted each one of us originally to be able to do. And the only way to do that is if we make Jesus king of our life. We, we don't say Lord of our lives because nobody uses that phrase anymore. Um, but making Jesus king of our life. So let me ask you, are you closer over here to the world with all of its problems, or are you closer to God and his solution because of what Jesus has done for you? Which one are you? And let them, let them say, I haven't met anybody yet who, in Cincinnati that doesn't say I'm somewhere in the middle. We have such a Catholic veneer over everything. They, they know a little bit of God's ways. They just know that they're not achieving it. And so they usually say somewhere in the middle. Rarely do you have somebody over here. Now, I've shared it with a Christian before and they say, oh, I'm born again. I'm not perfect, but I'm here with Jesus trying to grow in my faith. And I said, brother, that's great. I love hearing that. So at any rate, this is called the three circles, guys. 
I'm gonna go over it one more time without explaining everything and let you hear how the three circles works, okay? I'm just gonna start it plain right now. God created the world perfect, but yet because of sin, we have, our world is broken and we're separated from God. And because of sin, we have a barrier and can't go back. Even though we try to do things that make us feel better, like money, sex, and power, or whatever, we try doing these things to make us feel better, it just keeps like a bungee cord coming back into a broken world. God knew that we needed help, and so he sent Jesus to do three things. Model what it was like to live God's ways, and then he came to die on the cross for our sins. But he didn't stay dead on the third day he rose from the dead. And if we will make him king of our lives, he will help us grow into God's ways. It, oh, we have to turn, I'm sorry, I left this part off. If we turn and obey, if we turn from what we have been doing, you and I in the church would call that repentance, okay? And then follow him or obey his teachings, he will help us to grow if we make him king of our lives, all right? Go ahead and uh, teach that to your battle buddy, and uh, we'll see if we can kind of be almost finishing up. Number three, you guys have done great in this past hour. You've done really well. teach this there you go all right All right, if you haven't switched, switch and let your partner do it so that they can do it back with you. Believe it or not, this should only take a minute to share. Be wrapping up, please. How'd your partner do? Did you get done? Move through it in a minute? <clears throat> I want to put the pastor on the spot for this one, all right? all right? Pastor Daniel, come on up and teach us the three circles. Draw it big. All right. Um, and, and God made the world. God created the world, and God created the world perfect. Uh, but the problem, the problem with with it though, is that uh, mankind sinned. And let me see. Let me draw it a bit. So that was how it was from us. 
<laughs> so we, we, I didn't know that. So the world was broken. So mankind, mankind sinned. And so we, we lived in a broken world. And in our broken world, yeah. we tried to, to figure it out on our own. In other words, we tried to, but it was like a bungee effect. We would try drugs, we would try sex, power, all the things that we could try, and we just kept coming back to the same place. Um, but God had a plan, glory to his name. Um, Amen. It was turned. Turn, turn. Yeah. God had a plan if we would turn um, away from our sinful ways and obey God's plan and purpose, then we could be made new. We could have salvation. And so what God did... Um, to, to pay for us and to make the way for us as he sent his son down, Jesus, to live a godly life and show us the example of what it looks like to live the way that God would have us live. And then he died on the cross in our place so that we could find forgiveness and rose again so that we could have victory over sin and death and the, the brokenness of this world so that if we make Jesus the king of our life, we can grow and, and we can become more, we can be made new into the creation that God intended for us to be at the very beginning. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I appreciate it, Daniel. That's great. Guys, we're going to keep moving. You've got number four coming up. You all have been pretty good this afternoon. I appreciate that. Nobody's gone to sleep on us yet is always a good thing. All right, four is the win. All right, what we want you to do is finish this training on the fourth panel by when are you going to be praying? What we would like you to do is choose one time a day where you're going to pray for people that need to hear the good news. What do we call that group of people? Uh, no. No. You, you, the people that are lost that you want to pray for. No. You're going to call it your oikos, okay? Your sphere of influence. How quickly we forget, right? You're going to pray for your oikos right here, all right? Um, and then O-I-K-O-S, oikos, all right? Uh, I'm going to make sure they get this right. All right, now... The idea is when are you going to share with them? When are you going to share the three circles? You may want to uh, have an appointment where you're going to meet with them. You might want to realize, hey, every day at lunch, I have a chance to meet this person. Or like Jane was talking about, you got a neighbor behind you. It might be later on in the afternoon or something, or the next time she is working with her uh, dental hygienist or whatever. That would be that would be tremendous. Now, there's also something else that I'm going to give you as homework. This is sometimes this training is called the 411. There's four parts. You use one piece of paper, and it takes about an hour. Uh, if you just have one person, one-on-one, -on -one, it makes a difference. I know I was so excited about this that I called my parents, and uh, I, I had them go through the three circles with me. I had them go through the whole training. I thought that was interesting. I told uh, Daniel I was actually in a coffee shop with the guy. We shared the three circles with him. When I got through, he slid over, and he says, I want to know how to do what you just did. And so I took him through the whole 411 training. I took him through everything. I started off, well, we're told to make disciples, right? He said, yeah, but I don't know how to do that. And I said, well, it starts off. You have your identity in Christ. Have you ever read 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21? He wrote it down. Anyway, so I said, now you have your oikos, right? He said, yeah. And then we went into the three circles and 15 second testimony. And so anyway, if you meet somebody that's a Christian, this will give you a new opportunity. Um, do you mind if I borrow you just to have you stand up here real quick? In the past, whenever you meet someone that's lost, you want to share the gospel, right? 
you want to share the good news of Jesus. You say, hey, my name's Mark, and what's your name? David. David, great. We want to find out. And if you're born again, are you born again? Yes. Awesome. That is great. And you determine this guy really is born again. Then you have the other question. Who are you making disciples with? I have not met a Christian in Cincinnati yet that's making disciples. You say, David, and he goes, I'm a Methodist. Or David says, you know, I, but, but he's a born again believer. I belong to an independent Bible church. You know, that's great. We no longer go, oh, well, he's a Christian. Whew. See you later, David. Meet you in heaven one day. That's great. No, what we do is say, are you making disciples? Jesus said, make disciples. Have you been trained how to make disciples? I know of something in just a few minutes that could share with you. Could we spend maybe an hour together? I'd like you to take you through some training that I got in just one hour, and I can help you be a disciple maker. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate it. So we have a tool now to help others. What I did with you today is what I do with individuals that are Christians that I meet, and I help them become disciple makers. Okay, so you want to have a time where you're going to train. And then the other thing at the bottom is when are you going to start? Okay, um, starting is also what you want to do if somebody accepts Christ. You all may have a new members class You may have a new members class, but if you'll go to obeychrist.com, there are 10 lessons for new believers, and you could actually disciple them one-on-one. -on -one. I was in Kansas City doing this with a group, and I had a guy that just had gotten back from a mission trip to India where he'd been trained in this. We met an African-American gentleman, and he said, it was a Tuesday, and he said, hey, I've got 10 lessons. Can we start studying these this Thursday? And he goes, uh, this Thursday? I'm a Christian, right? You know, I'm gonna teach you what it means to, to really follow Christ. And there's 10 lessons here, and you can work one-on-one -on -one at obeychrist.com. Um, that will help you be able to have 10 lessons. And the lessons are so basic. The first lesson is repent and believe. Second lesson is being baptized. I think the sixth lesson is how to share your faith, which you use the three circles. Then you talk about, at, toward the end, it's gathering. And that's when you involve them in your church. So many times we have a new believer that has never been really raised in the church or whatever, we put them in a Sunday school class. Well, today we're going to be talking about the characteristics of a church, you know, which actually that one might be pretty good, which we did today. But what I'm saying is, is we don't necessarily meet them and provide the basics for them. We, we bring them into a church and all of a sudden there's a baptism and all of a sudden they're given the Lord's Supper and it's like, what is all of this and what do I do? And those obey Christ lessons give them the basics of a believer. So you don't need, close your ears, you don't need a new members class if you are going to disciple a new believer. I used to win people to Jesus in high school during the Jesus movement, and I never knew how to disciple. I never knew how to help them with the basics of Christ. We would sit and discuss things, but it wasn't the same as discussing what's in the Bible. And these are all Bible studies. You'll see they're all one page, very simple, and uh, you can do really two in an hour when you meet with them. So this is cool. All right, guys. You want just a second to be able to fill in your um, questions and think about and pray about that? What we want you to do is to commit to starting and commit to pray and share and then be able to train Christians and then be able to start discipling as well. Guys, what you've just been through is gospel conversations. Uh, it, it don't have to be a rocket scientist to be able to do this. And what it is is something that's meant to be able to not only teach you, but help you be a trainer for somebody else, okay?
Uh, you can keep that cheat sheet that I've given you, your, your training manual, your one-page training manual. You all are good sports about that. Um, but you know, you'll find that you really don't need to rely upon that piece of paper. Actually, I carry index cards with me to be able to do the three circles. And uh, I enjoy doing that. I was, um, we're out of these right now, uh, Pastor Daniel, but on my cell phone, I carry a sticker that has the three circles. And I was in a neighborhood in Lebanon, and I actually, Mary Lee's got it. Uh, you wanna bring that up to me? I was actually on the street and I met a girl from Guatemala that was with another guy and they were registering people that were Hispanics to vote. Thank you very much. This is my wife, Mary Lee. And anyway, I used what was on the back of my phone to be, this has been on here for two years, um, to be able to go through the three circles right there with her on the side of the street. And I asked her, you know, where she was, and she said that she was definitely with the broken world. And I said, well, is there anything keeping you from following Jesus as your Savior? And she said, no, I'd like to. And she bowed her head and prayed what you and I would call a sinner's prayer right there. Um, this les lesson, these lessons are meant, not meant to be perfect. It's something you're going to need to be practicing on, but it'll give you the basics of, of what you need to do in being able to share Christ and being able to bring them not only to rolling hills, but bring them to the cross. And I think that's important. Can we pray? And then Pastor Daniel, I'll turn it over to you. God, I pray your Holy Spirit's blessings upon everybody that came out this afternoon. Everybody that has gone through this training, may you watch over them, may you help them, may you guide them, may you show them the direction that they are to go. I pray that you will also reveal to them who they are to speak to. I pray that you will convict each person that they are sent because they are saved. I pray that they will also be able to not only go out to their sphere of influence, but do it in such a way that they can take what's being done and they can share it as well. We pray that they'll be committed to the commitments that they've made out here in the fourth section. And we thank you for just the opportunity today. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Daniel, I'm gonna turn it over to you and Mary Lee and I are gonna slip out. Uh, I am to present a plaque to Tom Pendergrass at six o'clock tonight in their church service. They're going to be recognizing him for 35 years of service as he retires from Urban Crest. And uh, so that's cool. Daniel, blessings, man. Blessings, thank you. Sir. All right, Let's get it's in your hand. Thanks.